Hey guys, it's Joe from GadgetDetect.com and today I'm going to be reviewing the BenQ EL2870U monitor that I have behind me. It is a $400 MSRP monitor, but you can buy it for as little as $300 on places like Best Buy and Amazon as of September 2019. Obviously prices can change, but that's where we're at. So with that being said, if you're looking at this video, chances are you're researching, hey, this monitor isn't as much as the $500,000 monitors out there. What am I getting? Is it still worth it? The intent of this review isn't to cover every single spec, bell and whistle, color accuracy of the screen, but what's important as a gamer, uh, which I again think this is why you're coming across this, is the performance when it comes to uh, competitive gaming. Is the monitor going to let you down? And that's where the BenQ shines because for the money, it's giving you the best bang for your buck you can get. It has 4K, has HDR, has AMD FreeSync, um, it has two HDMI 2.0 ports, one display port, 1.4, uh, of course. Uh, so you're getting all the connectivity you want, and then the HDR uh, and 4K give you the best edge you can get when it comes to console gaming. So if you buy a, a PlayStation Pro or an Xbox One X and you want to utilize that, the monitor is ready to go. Now there are color calibration settings and all that you can play with, of course, to tune the picture. We'll dive into that as we uh, progress in this review. But I want to start off by this because not everyone sticks out around to the end of the review. If you're looking for a value monitor that gives you 4K HDR and gives you a competitive edge because of the low input lag, high performance, etc., the BenQ kicks ass. I've been using it for a couple months now. I've compared it to the Samsung 4K HDR monitor that's also about $300 through Best Buy. I've compared it to my LG 43 inch 4K, which was a decent, it's a mid range LG. And this thing blows the pants off of both of those monitors because the brightness is excellent, the um, contrast is adequate, but we'll get into that later. But you get the 4K clarity with ridiculously good input lag. It's a one millisecond response time. Measured input lag on a couple sites are as little as four milliseconds, which is less than half of the fastest television you can buy. So for the money, yes, if you're a competitive gamer and you want to get every upper hand you can without breaking the, the bank and spending everything you have left in your wallet to get what you want, this is an awesome monitor. So let's talk about why. Okay, so on the bottom of the BenQ monitor is the light sensor bar, and that helps if Brightness Intelligence Plus is enabled, or BI Plus, that helps dynamically change the brightness and color tone based off the lighting conditions of the room. And we'll show you that with the on-screen menu later in the review. Uh, Design-wise, it is a very straightforward monitor. Everything is black. The bezels are not too thick or thin. The back is a VESA 100 mount. Um, standard C13 power input cord, which means no power supply necessary, along with two HDMIs and DisplayPort on the opposite side. The pedestal gives you a standard tilt function, although there is no height adjustment. Okay, now it's time for a head-to-head -head comparison, and in this case, we actually chose a television instead of another computer monitor. Reason being is for three to four hundred dollars you have a big decision to make. Should you get a smaller computer screen with 4K HDR or should you go for a smart TV that gives you the screen size and apps like Netflix and Amazon Instant Video. With that being said, we chose the smart TV route because I want to paint a really good picture on what you can expect for a difference in the same price range. The LG we picked is the 43UJ6300, it's 4K with HDR10, has very low input lag in game mode, one of the best in its price. Um, but let's see how it stacks up. Okay, so let's literally jump in with Call of Duty Black Ops. Um, and you could tell right off the bat the BenQ on the left hand side is noticeably brighter than the LG on the right. And this is further demonstrated on this part on the rooftop. You can see um, the BenQ on the left again. Much brighter picture, much more detail. Uh, inside, even further demo, look at the wall with the three color bands, whereas the LG kind of has a gray film. Things just seem to pop more on the BenQ. And that is the critical point I am trying to make because if you look closely, you see that right there in the window? There is a silhouette of an enemy in the window. And on the BenQ, there is a much bigger difference between the silhouette of the enemy versus the white behind the enemy. And that's what you need for your eye to notice that subtle detail in a building. If everything's a gray film, your eye's probably not gonna see it. And that person's gonna see you without you seeing them and you're dead. But because I was able to notice it, on the BenQ, I could finish the job. Now this was played on the BenQ and then we're just playing the video back uh, as a recording for consistency. But that is the key point I'm trying to make. When you get a high-end monitor like this um, that's designed for gaming, that detail alone gives you an upper hand and I can't stress that enough. That's what you're paying for and that's why I like the BenQ monitor so much. 
So um, enough of the battle royale. Let's get into multiplayer because it's an even bigger difference here. You can tell on the right hand side with the LG it's noticeably darker. That is the default game mode on the LG. I didn't make any changes. With the BenQ I actually pulled the brightness down just a little bit. But you can see a huge difference right off the bat. So I don't think this is fair for the LG. You're not going to see almost anything. It's impossible to play. Most people would crank up the brightness at this point just so they can see. So let's do that now. We're going to crank up the brightness on the LG to 90 out of 100 and see how that looks. And with that being said, okay, so now that we can see all the details, the one disadvantage I see is to me the picture kind of looks like crap. Uh, I hate seeing a gray film on a screen. And again, I didn't make any changes to the camera. But the BenQ is able to give you all that brightness and details in the dark scenes without having that gray film or, or looking like crap, at least compared to, in this case, the LG 43 inch. So I hope that gives you a really good idea on what kind of difference you can expect on a gaming monitor versus a gaming television or a standard uh, UHD TV. Okay, so now we're going to take a quick look at the on-screen display. And on the bottom right-hand corner, you have an HDR button, which when you press it more than once will turn on an emulated HDR, in case your source is not HDR, and then Brightness Intelligence Plus, which when enabled will dim the screen if the room gets darker, and even adjust the color tone automatically to make it warmer or cooler, depending on the lighting in your room. And you can, of course, turn that off. So you can see the monitor just got darker, and if I turn it off, it's going to get much brighter again. So it's a really nice feature. Um, if you're gaming and you feel like it makes it too dark, just make sure that's turned off so you can uh, still see everything in dark areas. Uh, this is another level of adjusting your warmth of the picture or reducing the blue light. Uh, as you go lower, it makes it look more red and reduces the blue, which will reduce eye strain. This is your custom uh, picture presets. User is user defined, of course, if you made your own calibrations. However, you can cycle through many different options which will change color, brightness, contrast, etc. So let's go back to user. Uh, input, of course, this is self-explanatory. It is set to auto switch inputs by default. So if I turn off my computer and my Xbox is on, it'll automatically switch to HDMI. I turned that feature off because sometimes you might restart something and you don't want it to switch sor sources by itself. So you can turn it off in the advanced menu, which is here. Uh, first two tabs that you see, eye care and picture, that's where we just went through with the shortcut keys. Picture advanced, this is kind of cool because super resolution is a really unique feature that I recommend looking into to see if it helps or hurts your picture. It basically creates almost like an outline, if you will, to um, anything on the screen. It, it's like drawing a black pen around certain items, which can look, make things look sharper. It does increase the sharpness, but it can add noise and make certain games look a little funny. So play around with that, see if it gives you a, any kind of an edge or improvement. Smart Focus just creates a matte box in uh, the outer edge of the screen. I don't really recommend using this because uh, most modern video players or video players can do that automatically. However, it is built into the screen if you want that. Um, and then let's go back one more. Display mode, full, that's pretty self-explanatory. That's just your scaling. So going to audio, it does have two watt speakers, so you can change the audio volume here. And then system, uh, on-screen display, clock, switch inputs again, custom keys. You can assign the shortcut keys to be either input, brightness, picture mode, etc. Right now it's my picture mode and input. Uh, DDC is basically just turning on um, the monitor's ability to communicate with your computer to tell it what kind of resolution and refresh rates it supports. Always leave that on unless you're having issues and have to turn it off. Uh, auto input switch, there's your setting I was talking about. I leave it off because I like to manually switch. However, that is your spot to change it. Auto power off, if the monitor has no display for a while, it'll shut itself off completely instead of just standby. And resolution notice basically shows you what resolution and if HDR is enabled on the screen or not. So that covers the on-screen display. Now let's uh, talk about our final thoughts. Okay, so that wraps up the BenQ EL2870U review. I hope you learned a lot from this review. We certainly learned a lot just by playing with the monitor for quite some time. And I can tell you it has ruined me because I cannot go back to my purposely bought LG 43 inch 4K that I was using for gaming. Uh, I can't use it anymore because I feel like I don't see as much. I feel like my aim isn't as good because of that stunning input lag and brightness that you get with the BenQ. So with that being said, if you're looking for a monitor that you can actually afford and you don't want to have the every single bell and whistle, 99% color accuracy, etc., 
you don't have to spend a fortune. You can get it with the BenQ. It's marketed as an affordable HDR 4K screen for gaming enthusiasts, which is huge because gaming enthusiasts need a lot. Um, it's a great monitor. It hasn't let me down. It's now my main monitor. I am keeping it at this point because I like using it so much and I feel like I am not the same player when I return to other screens. So if that's not endorsement enough, shoot me a comment below. I'll be happy to talk about the monitor. I really hope you guys enjoyed this review. We've certainly enjoyed reviewing it and talking about it. And thanks again. We will see you next time. Bye.